microphone does not work, you need to speak up. Now we are going to take a look at the differences in speed and cost between four countries around the world and their impact in the life of citizens. Eight, eight, 
right? The speed of the internet is uh, approximately two to three uh, Mbps. A lot of uh, the three main companies in my country give you uh, an eight megabyte per second. The internet speed in my, in my home in Mexico, uh, it's quite fast. I think it's like five megabytes. I think it may about um, 50 pounds a month. Uh, the cost, uh, I think it's quite cheap because, um, for example, in my family, it's approximately 10 pounds one month average cost. It's about 353 hours per month. Uh, the speed of the internet is very uh, fast and it's very convenient to use. I found that uh, during the 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. it's quite difficult to connect to the internet. The members of the uh, users is the main reason. I don't think the 350 hours is the price of our line services. We have lots of rain, lots of rain weather, some thunders and everything. When that happens, uh, we we are used to have failures with the internet. Maybe you were having to have more about the for a few hours. As shown in the graph, South Korea has a high quality and widespread internet access. In the other hand, countries like China and Saudi Arabia are not at its level yet. Mexico is still on its way to reach a developed stage. When it comes to the cost of internet service, it is remarkable the gap between South Korea and the other three countries. Or a South Korean user can access a really fast internet speed with 35 American dollars in Mexico, Saudi Arabia, and China cannot get a real high speed connection. South Korean and Chinese citizens perceive the price that they are paying is fair. In the other hand, Saudi Arabia and Mexican citizens feel that the cost of this service is generally expensive. We are easy to connect to the internet with the uh, smartphone, smart TV, the laptop, and computer. Uh, but some of the country, the people who live in there, they are difficult to using the digital products or can connect with the internet. The digital device is kind of a global issue, such as uh, uh, economics or social problems. Take a look at the right side. <laughs> uh, we may see a big difference between developed country and developing countries. Uh, normally, the developed country like uh, the internet, uh, they got 56.5% available to connect to the uh, network. In the same way, uh, there are many uh, world like Congo or Cambodia, they only got 0.5% uh, available to connect to the internet. Uh, so, uh, mostly uh, third world countries are below the uh, provided link. Uh, it, it was a uh, pixel circles. If the student difficult to use the technology and the uh, information or resource provider on the internet, there will not, they, are, they, they will have uh, efficiency in their education uh, pursuit. It will be difficult to have high, higher paying job and economic opportunity. But actually, American and some of the developed countries still have this kind of situation. Uh, about of individual cut off from the internet or other uh, technique advice. Many families have available to the internet, but there are also many white to uh, Quite some family from developed country do not have internet access. It is because they fell into the social circle. And we can see the uh, last sentence that the people of older generations who think our mouths are still uh, working. 
is why that's why uh, so much more from every country are getting left behind. Digital divide, Steve. Digital what? Digital divide. Why is this the divide? Well, the digital divide is an economic inequality between different groups of people in terms of access and use of information communication technologies. Same. What? We've got computers on this side, and they haven't got any on that side. No computer? See. You don't understand the implications of that, Steve. Let me show you. In 2003, only 7% of the world's 6.4 billion people had access to the World Wide Web. Now that number has increased, but the majority of the world's population still can't access the internet. But what's the problem? What do you mean, what's the problem? Internet access plays a vital part in modern society. In some countries, internet access for all is part of economic equality and is something that the government aims to guarantee for all. Then there's also the matter of education. If anyone is watching this highly educated video, how will they be doing it? Um, do you think technology is, Steve? Without access to technology, education is undermined and therefore opportunities in the future are also compromised. Oh, I see. Well, I will get going then. No, no, there's more, Steve. Say you've got actions going. How are you going to find out about the candidates? Using technology, Steve. Access to ICT and therefore information stimulates a healthy democracy because people can interact and discuss with one another more easily, as well as actually know exactly what it is they are voting for. Really interesting. Stop interrupting me, Steve. I'm not done yet. I'm really starting to see why the D35 sucks. Technology generally has a positive correlation with the production capabilities of a country. So, if a country has technologies, its economy expands, which allows it to invest more in technology, and so it spirals up. This benefits the economy on a global scale. And because of this, the digital divide is such an issue in the modern world, and bridging it will be key to achieving more equality in the future. What you also need to know about. Uh, so, like what we have watched from the video is that digital divides have had a digital divide affect the economy of the country. And I'm talking about uh, how this will influence family. Um, like the, the people, the old generation, like when they when they were born, there were no the, uh, the digital technology. So the young adults or the, the, the children now, they usually use the digital technology, like they usually use the Facebook or or anything else. That's the old generation. They don't they are not very uh, aware of that or they don't know how to use that thing. So. There is apparently a gap between the young people and the old people. And um, so this apparently will influence their relationship. And also, like no new friends, no new friends nowadays by the digital technology is very easy. You can like there are some softwares that 
can show uh, the distance, how far is, it is uh, between you and the person, and, and you can just say hello to them, so you can like, make a new friend. But of course, there is a risk in it, like uh, you, you're, you're using your real photos, or like what, what you really are, but somebody else, they are like, uh, they use their fake name or fake photos. So apparently this is a race, risk here, and this is my part. So, <coughs> as, as Fleming and Johnson and Sam pointed out, the digital divide is, is quite apparent in societies today. Uh, so there's a gap, right? So what can be done to bridge the gap as the picture would say, like a bridge between those who have technology or the internet and those who don't. <coughs> so one of the ways is, is like the government can do, give funding uh, to organizations or give, give computers to schools because uh, education needs technology to, to keep up with other institutions. Uh, encourage uh, development in that area. And so also the companies have a lot of money and often invest in, in technologies to bring internet, for example, to places where there's none. Google, for example, has this project called the, I think it's called the Loon, Loon Project, where it uh, has these balloons. It's quite, it's quite funny, but it's a balloon that uh, hovers over pours over an area and supplies internet access uh, to lots of people. Uh, I think Facebook also has certain uh, technologies like that. Um, uh, so also Bill Gates has also given money. Um, I think also individuals themselves can also uh, be involved in trying to bridge the gap. For example, if you have old laptops or computers or gadgets, you can recycle them, you can set up programs to give your old you know, gadgets or computers to, to uh, schools or, or kids who need them. Uh, those are all ways you can try to bridge the gap. Send them some. Yeah, so there's difficulties in that, right? There's a lot, a lot of time it takes money and, and it's quite expensive to build infrastructure for internet and Computers, obviously, they need money to make. Uh, so, some important ways to overcome this is by raising awareness, um, uh, having human resources, so getting people to uh, invest in your project, uh, and overcoming communication barriers. For example, you're in, in uh, Bangladesh and you want to help some school uh, to supply them computers, you need to be able to kind of speak the language and work with the official of the school. To help them out. So those are important. So Johnson will conclude for us. Okay, so we uh, talk about what is digital divide and uh, who is affected, what is affected, and uh, the ways to bridge the digital divide. So here's a question for for you. Do you, do you think it is able to close the digital divide? So do you think it is able to bridge the digital divide? Uh, what do you think? And why? Uh, anybody wants to answer? So what do you think, Professor? One of the jobs of doing the presentation is to facilitate discussions among the groups. <laughs> so you may okay, ask. You choose a one. Uh, Abby. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's possible or, or it's impossible? Very simple. So do you think it's possible to close the gap or 
No, you cannot. Any other ideas from other tables? <clears throat> Do you think Thank you very much, team number six, which is going to be followed by team number uh, Takasi, your group, right? Okay, so it takes some while. The secret of inducing uh, discussions after your talk is to buy them some drinks, put it on the tables. <laughs> Go to the team one, not the pair one, yes, team one, yeah. The microphone is not seems to be working, so you need to speak loudly. Okay. Facebook 
，身為治安警察局特警嘅佢，今年先喺學校出嚟，但繼續知法合法。查實兩年前開始，佢已經喺 Facebook 開咗多個假 account， 主要揾一啲十四至十六歲嘅女學生。佢同個對方咧就聲稱自己咧係一名僆女，將啲女性嘅裸照，佢聲稱係要自己個個人嘅裸照，就首先發俾對方。就係、是、有片佢哋咧，影翻一啲佢自己嘅裸照發翻俾佢。裸照得手之後，連親親喺 WeChat 上發俾對方，可以提供更加多裸照。就是、要挾佢咧，就要求咧，就係誒要同佢發生性行為。喺舊年六月至今年十一月，至少有九個女仔被性侵同入獄。直至上個月二十一號，終於有一個被威脅嘅十八歲女報案。司警就喺女事主營養嗰時將人警拉咗，但因為要進一步調查，暫時釋放。有一具廢紙機區屋企嘅電腦，搜到超過一千七百條裸露片同相，全部都係十幾歲嘅女仔，當中有一百六十一個髮，有曬名同年齡，全部都係澳門人。司警確認有七十八個係學生，有三十四個已經落咗口供話，曾經被人警威脅進行性行為，其中有三個未成年少女，更加被帶到樓梯同屋企。司警將只喺前日將二十二歲嘅人警正式拘捕，又相信仲有其他受害人，會以較清楚嘅案去調查相關學生。有個本前線。
Thank you, Finis. Same website to the uh, for 
Okay, thank you very much for your help. You're doing a good job in presenting. So we still have um, fewer than less than half an hour. Uh, let me double check on the students who are willing to do the speeches of the semester today before we continue with another particular team. We have uh, quite a number of students who would like to share. Let me see. Looks very attractive. Thank you, Kirin. You can stand. Someone's just helping you. Um, could Kira help Kirin to press the button so that you can stand in the middle to talk? Yeah. Thank you, Kira. Of this class, 
because of its content, information security, and privacy. I think it's a uh, fresh for me because I use computer references. Uh, it's just my problem to account. Uh, send something to stranger. Uh, I use Facebook to keep track of the quick vulnerabilities and hackers. Uh, we should take care of some of our software, hardware, and URL. Um, and our items during the server the internet, it sounds a little bit complicated, um, but we know that take care of it, the risk of web system in everywhere. Um, this is the second part. 
Thank you, Kirian. Uh, I think you did a very good job in putting things together and share that excellent um, preparations with us. And thank you very much for your speech. Um, actually, it takes a lot of guts and preparations to get yourself ready and to stand in front of others to share. So, are you ready? So, today, besides Kirian, let me double check on the young name. So, that it's. Um, you, you don't want to do it today, right? to sign up, all right? This is a time where you can express yourself and share your whole semester's learning with the whole class. And by doing that, you can earn up to 10 semester points, which is equivalent to five in class sharing. All right, allow me to take attendance for the day, and then I'm going to see you again on Friday. Oh, remember, I issued a teacher's message for week number 12 today, and you will see another message for week number 13 tomorrow, together with the very interesting new development in student feedback questionnaire, all right? It's uh, the last questionnaire you need to do for the semester before the last questionnaire, which we are going to do on the very last day of this class, okay? So, Takashi is here, Johnson is here, Zebra is not here today, okay? And then Austin, Austin, thank you. Light is not here today, Edward is here, uh, German is here, right? Thank you. Karina is here, Finland is here, and Kelvin is here, right? Kelvin. Kelvin, thank you, very fine. Abby, thank you. Dorothy is here. Expressor is here. Kira is here. Sam, thank you. Remy, thank you. Ian, thank you. Julia is here. Anne is here today. And then Kiwi is here. Sophie is here. Maxi is here. Uh, Austin is here. Billy is here. Sunny is here, all right? So, what is it? Mabel is here, right? So, Stanley is here. Kaylee, this Kaylee is not here. Iris Hugh is here. Iris Cole is here. Thank you, Mr. Uh, and then Jackie, uh, thank you. Joe, thank you. So, Tomato. Kirin, yes, Sophie, Sue, it's not the So, welcome back and looking forward to your next round of team based presentations. Two more things next time on Friday and two more speakers, okay? Alright, so see you back here on Friday. Now make sure your e portfolio is ready uh, on, this, on November the 27th. And I'm, I will stop giving you a break on November 28th, okay? We'll get everything ready before you find out exactly how
Thank you. 